The record-breaking nature of Harvey has renewed the conversation about the link between climate change and extreme weather events. Congressman Higgins is a vocal climate change skeptic. I asked him if the events of the last week have at all changed his mind. You can listen to that exchange on our website, pbs.org slash newshour. Today's explosions at the Arkema chemical plant northeast of Houston are underscoring concerns about the hazards of dangerous chemicals in the area. Houston is a major hub for refineries and has some of the largest petrochemical operations in the country. Our science producer, Sikhan Akpan, has been looking into those concerns. He published a piece this week documenting some of the other leaks and ruptures in the region. It's on our webpage. Sikhan, um, Tell us a little bit about what we know about Arkema, first of all, what's happening there. So Arkema produces organic peroxide, so these compounds that are used to make plastics. And the thing is, is that they're inherently unstable. So if they, they tend to react with you know, other elements in the environment, they're also very sensitive to the heat. So Arkema was storing these compounds in refrigerated boxes, and when the power went out, the heat rose, it led to pressure to build, and you had this explosion. And unfortunately, the backup systems didn't keep the materials cool, and hence you had this difficulty. Let's listen briefly to Richard Reynard, who is an executive with Arkema. What we have is a fire. And when you have a fire that where hydrocarbons, these chemicals, are burning, uh, sometimes you have incomplete combustion, and you have smoke. And any smoke is going to be um, um, an irritant to your eyes or your lungs or potentially your skin. So if you're exposed to that, we certainly are encouraging anyone that, that may be exposed to, to the smoke coming from this fire to call their doctor or to seek medical, uh, medical advice. All right, so point well taken. It's not as bad as an outright leak, I suppose, but with the smoke, there is some concern, isn't there? Exactly. I mean, these compounds are corrosive, which means that, like I said, they tend to react with things. So they want to react with the water in your eyes. They want to react with, you know, the compounds in your skin. Um, and that might explain why 15 deputies from the sheriff's office were sent to the hospital, because, you know, it's, it's potentially they were exposed to this incomplete burn that he, that he brought up. Good reason to have that mile and a half zone around it where people should not go in for now until this gets sorted out. Let's look at the bigger picture here. Houston in general, huge petrochemical facilities, a number of them. Uh, you've had a chance to kind of look at the big picture. Tell us what uh, people are looking at, what concerns there are. So the Sierra Club looked into EPA data and they found that 170 chemical, petrochemical, and also oil and gas hazardous waste facilities exist in Harris County, which is home to Houston. Uh, many of these facilities exist in floodplains, and we know that at least uh, a dozen of them were damaged by the hurricane. Obviously, a lot of petrochemicals in Houston. Uh, give us an idea of the types of concerns, the specific problems that can crop up. So it's known that, that petrochemical companies, that they have these emissions whenever they start up and shut down. And so before the hurricane even arrived, there were reports uh, or regulatory filings by these companies showing that they were releasing, you know, hundreds of pounds of, of these chemicals into the air. But most of them were done in a controlled way, which isn't so much of a hazard to the environment. You know, if you leak these very slowly, they spread out in the air and they're not going to be toxic to somebody. What happened was after... After the hurricane hit, there was so much rain, there was so much wind that there was damage to what are called floating roof tanks. And so the floating roof tank is exactly what the name suggests, right? So you have a roof that moves up and down with, depending on how you fill the tank. And what that allows is it allows for a certain amount of venting. It allows for a certain amount of the chemical to turn into vapor. What, they, what happened was that some of these facilities, these tanks took on so much water that their roofs actually collapsed into the liquid that they were holding, which allowed the vapors to escape into the air. So uh, let's talk about other potential hazards. A lot of Superfund sites in Houston. What about those? So there are about a dozen Superfund sites in Harris County. Uh, many are in the, the flood plains. And so far, Harris County has issued about 45 boil water advisories. And I think about, and there are about 160 issued for the state. Okay, so uh, you, you could ask the question, uh, we knew a hurricane could hit Houston, of course. Are these facilities, when you look at the big picture, are they hardened enough against that threat? Well, so other, other studies have looked at these floating roof tanks and have, and have shown that when hurricanes hit, that they 
are, they do tend to take on destruction. So due to the fact that they're built with very thin walls, that they have very unsturdy foundations, these things do tend to move around when there's a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Sikhan Akpan is our science producer. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. There are lots of questions about the health risks associated with this explosion and what people need to know about the air and water in Houston. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the National Institutes of Health is here to guide us on some of the public health questions about these toxic chemicals. First of all, give us an idea. When we hear about chemicals like organic peroxides or benzene, that those kinds of things either in the air or in the water, that naturally raises people's concern. Help us calibrate how concerned we should be. Well. It depends on the concentration of these things. You were just talking about the, the smoke because of the fire and the burning. Uh, the, how the authorities in, in that area cordoned off the area so that you have a circle around so that you don't get direct exposure to that. Exposures, if they are mild in the sense of barely just a small concentration, it's mostly an irritant, particularly the peroxides that in that smoke would irritate the skin or even irritate the lungs. So for the most time, it could be either just a little bit of a nuisance irritant or if you get a really big whiff of it, particularly people who have, for example, a reversible airways disease like uh, asthma or different types of hypersensitivity diseases, you could get a serious problem. But for the most part, what I'm seeing and I'm hearing that's being done there about cordoning off an area to keep people far enough away that at worst it would be just an irritant. Hopefully it stays that way and we don't see any more of it going to where people are. What about when we hear about chemicals that end up for one reason or another in the water itself? How big a concern should that be? It really depends on what the chemical is. You had mentioned uh, uh, hydrocarbons, things like benzene and toluene. Those are a little bit more than irritants because they can be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and from the lungs. And when it does, that what you can do is that you can then have toxicities systemically or to different organs. That's really with a whopping dose. So I don't want people to get concerned that if it's a really diluted in water that there's going to be a problem. But at its worst, it does have the potential to cause organ system dysfunction like liver or a kidneys or even central nervous system and even some cardiac arrhythmias. But again, that's in the extreme. You don't want people to be concentrating that that's going to happen to them if they're in the water and you have a very low concentration of these. But ultimately, the capability of that, it really depends on what the dose is and the concentration. Tell us about some of the other immediate health concerns uh, people in your position have as they look at Houston. Yeah, well, it really is a broad spectrum. It goes from anything from the immediate acute thing, and we've already seen it uh, on TV multiple times. You have people, for example, who could drown, that tragic situation of a family drowning in, in a van. You have people who could get electrocuted. You could have injuries. That's the first thing. Then when you have the water, which is contaminated with sewage, you can have multiple problems with that. It could be you can have gastrointestinal problems by inadvertently swallowing some of the contaminated water that's contaminated with sewage, and you can get a variety of bacterial or viral types of gastroenteritis. Also, you can, you can irritate or even get infections in the skin. You could have either obvious lesions, scrapes and cuts, for example, in your lower body. We've seen people who are in the water up to their waist. Those are the kind of things that people need to be aware of. That's one of the reasons why Secretary Price of HHS declared a public health emergency and why our own CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, are working with the local and state authorities to make people aware of this broad spectrum of health hazards that you need to pay attention to. As you look toward the long term, what are the real concerns? And we're talking years down the road for people who have been through something like this. Well, for the long term down the road, clearly whenever you have traumas like this with natural disasters, there always is the situation of mental issues, namely depressions, either de novo depressions in people who have not been depressed or exacerbations of people who have a propensity to depression and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Also, as, as I think people don't fully appreciate sometimes, when you have a situation like this that we're seeing on the ground, people get dissociated 
from their medical care. They don't have access to their standard medicines that they take, or they need medical care that they get interrupted can have long-term effects upon their health later on, as well as immediate effects on their health. So those are the kind of things that you don't immediately think of when you think of a hurricane or a flood, but that are important health issues. Dr. Anthony Fauci is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Thank you for your time. Good to be with you.